Oh, look at my cute girl. Hello, can you say hi? No. Okay. It's a mess back here, so ignore that. But hello, I am still working on Frau's skirt. So like I promised last week, I'm going to go over how I'm going to do the resin gems. I have quite a few to make. Just her skirt alone has, I think, 20. And then her sleeves get a bunch, her bodice gets a bunch, her hat gets a bunch. So we're going to be doing a lot of resin casting for this project. So I figured I would go through how I, first off, make a mold of my gems because I have one mold so far and that's what I usually use to cast all of my gems but because I need so many this time I want to take the gems that I've cast in the past and make a big mold of like I don't know like eight of them so that I can be casting eight of them rather than having to cast one at a time wait 12 hours for that to set and then casting another one you know that just takes so much time if I cast eight at one time then I only have to wait 12 hours for the eight of them rather than uh, what is that four days for eight of them so I'm gonna be making a mold off of my currently existing gems and then I'm going to be casting the gems showing how I paint them with nail polish to make them all sparkly and then also how I bead them to integrate them into the costume as a whole so hopefully that is interesting for you guys um what oh my cute girl yeah, so that's going to be what I'm doing for this whole video, uh, that's that's the plan. And then hopefully by the time that I'm done with all of the gems and all of the everything, I will have a skirt. So I'm just plugging away at, at all of the embroidery still. I've got a lot still to digitize and to stitch out, so I'm working on that while I'm also doing the resin because obviously when I'm casting the resin, I have a wait time of multiple hours, so I'm going to be continuing with Frau's skirt while I wait for these resin gems to cast, but I figured I would show you guys how I do it all. Awesome. Uh, let's go through materials. So resin casting unfortunately requires quite a few special supplies, like very specific supplies, so it is kind of an investment to get started in it. But once you kind of start building stuff up, then the only things that you really need to continue buying are molds for whatever new project you want. Uh, mold making supplies. Uh, if you want to cast your own molds, and then resin. Like, those are kind of the things that you'll need to keep buying. Everything else, once you have the supplies, you kind of build up a stock. For the first step of making a mold, you will need foam board to make the mold box. I just bought some cheap stuff from Michael's. It's Elmer's foam board, and I bought whatever was the most cost-effective size. And you'll need Smooth On, Umu 30, or really uh, any of their products will work, but the Umu are probably the easiest to use and best for beginners and also just like they work really well so why go look for something else. There are other brands of mold making supplies. I'm just most familiar with Smooth On because that's what we used in school. They work super well so why not? Also for the mold box you're going to need crystal clear and you should use an acrylic spray to coat everything that you're molding just so that it's all smooth and like the mold doesn't interact with anything because there are a lot of factors that can make resin and mold goo, I guess, not cure properly. You'll need a glue gun and like glue sticks obviously to put in the glue gun and that'll just help you put your mold box together. And then lastly, you will need a scale. Um, I just use a food scale. I wrap it in a plastic bag because you can see that I've gotten <laughs> mold rubber all over the scale already, but having it in a plastic bag while you do everything will protect it. Uh, so I should have done that from the start, but I didn't. Oh well. <laughs> and then like, you'll need stuff to stir it. You, I'm gonna use popsicle sticks, but you could use like a plastic spoon or something. For the actual resin part, you'll need resin. I'm trying out art resin for the first time. I've never used this before, but it got pretty good reviews. I used to use ice resin because they claimed to not yellow at all. That is just blatantly not true. This is a gem that I cast a while ago and I don't know if you can tell on the camera, but like it's got a yellow cast to it. So while they claimed that this was a non-yellowing resin, they lied. So don't buy ice resin, it yellows. There are a lot of resins out there that do yellow. I'm hoping that art resin does not yellow because what that does to purple gems, this used to be a purple gem, it is now a gray gem. <laughs> So yellowing can really affect the colors that you're using. If you're making kind of a yellowish cast or an orange cast gem, that's fine. Just use 
whatever you have available. It doesn't matter if it yellows, but if you're doing something that's more cool toned, a yellowish cast will affect it and make it not the color that you wanted it to be originally. Because I'm making purple gems, I'm going to use alcohol ink to dye the resin and you only need a couple drops. You really don't want to add a lot of liquid to resin because it will inhibit the cure. So it'll make it so it stays sticky forever. I've got a couple of gems that have sticky spots on it and they never go away because they just didn't cure properly. The heat gun is to get rid of any bubbles. If you have bubbles that pop up in your resin, the heat gun will help disperse those. I don't have the nail polish here because I'm still looking for a nail polish that I want to use. I have not purchased one yet, so that is something you'll also need if you want to make gems that look like mine, but you know. Um, and then beads to bead stuff, but we'll get to that part later. Okay, this is what you will need for the actual casting and mold making part of this whole process. All right, so you'll probably also want a box cutter, a cutting mat, a ruler, and a pencil just so you can like cut the poster board down, but you know, use whatever you've got to cut things. I have eight gems here that I'm gonna use. So these are an inch and an eighth about, maybe an inch and a quarter in length, and they are almost an inch in width. So I'll probably want an inch and a half by an inch for each of these gems at least. So if I kind of arrange them on the poster board here by how wide I want them, So this was my original mold here, but I bought this off of Etsy a few years ago. I don't know if they're still in business. I think they're from Russia, but you can find these on Etsy if you just search like faceted cabochon resin mold and like whatever shape you want. So obviously I picked an oval. Um, it's really hard to find diamond shapes. <laughs> Brow actually has diamond shapes on her design, but it's it, like impossible to find. So I'm using these oval shapes and right now I'm just kind of placing them on to the poster board and I'm gonna just measure around it, make sure they each have enough space for their own little well. So that'll be the base of our mold box. And now I just have to cut out four walls and then we can glue it all together. Okay. How tall is this? This is only about a half inch. So I probably will build these walls to be an inch in height. And then I'll just mark where the half inch is so that I can know where to stop while I'm pouring. Cause I don't want it to be too thick cause then otherwise that's just kind of a waste of the mold making supplies. So I'll just do this instead. the mold box you really just put the walls on there and that's it <laughs> so I'm gonna take my hot glue gun is it hot yet? Yes, this is hot and just go along one edge you want to get a decent amount of glue on there because this is what's gonna make it like not watertight but like mold goo tight I suppose so once I've got two of the walls on there I'm gonna start putting my gems in and unfortunately, things that you glue to poster board are you're gonna kind of lose to the poster board. So eh, it's not really super, like it's a reusable mold box. You can make multiple molds off of it, but they're not like the things that you mold, depending on how well you stick them on there are gonna be kind of hard to get off of there. Mark a half inch on one of these. most part you do want it to be so the glue kind of gets all the way to the edge so you don't let any mold making goo kind of seep under it but if it does seep under it's okay it'll still come out and like you can just cut off the undercut there and it'll be totally fine it's worse if the glue seeps out from under the gem because then you'll have to like file stuff off which is annoying so it's better to like let there be an undercut under the gem. It's easier to cut the mold up than it is to cut resin up, if that makes sense.
I'm gonna spray this with the crystal clear acrylic coating. I'm gonna go do that outside, so off camera, but I am gonna do it. You just need a quick spray. You don't need like a really heavy amount. You just wanna make sure that everything is sealed up so that anything that might interact with the mold making material doesn't because it can inhibit the cure and then you just end up with a goopy mess and that's not great. I'm gonna spray it and then I'm gonna leave it overnight so that it does off gas and nothing in the acrylic coating <laughs> inhibits the cure because you have to be really careful with all of this stuff. There's a lot of ways that this can just go wrong for no reason. So that's that's it for now. Okay, my mold box has degassed overnight so everything is nice and shiny and covered in plastic spray, so that's good. The next step is to pour the mold in here. So I've got my smooth on and there's a part A and a part B. The yellow is part A, blue is part B, and I've got some cups for mixing. I've got like little Dixie cups and plastic cups. I prefer to use the plastic cups if I can get away with it because the Dixie cups are wax coated and that can kind of get into the mold. So that's not great, but if I need a larger cup, then I'll use that. You can also use Tupperware and stuff to make large amounts, but because I'm just filling this up to like the half inch mark, that's not really necessary. You can see the little half inch mark right there. And it's just not, like I'm not gonna be using a ton of mold making stuff. So these Dixie cups should be big enough. I have two sizes of popsicle stick, and I might also grab a plastic knife because you have to stir these really well before you start pouring them. So there's two ways to measure the umu, and you can do that by volume or by weight. I am gonna do by weight, and then that's pretty much it. It takes six hours to cure at 72 degrees or something. My house is definitely not that warm. I don't particularly love doing resin stuff in the winter because it does set better if it's warm out, whereas if it's cold, that can inhibit the cure as well. If you can help it, do all of your resin and mold making in the summer rather than the winter, but I kind of need to just get this done. So we're doing it right now and it probably will take a little bit longer than the six hours to cure because of that. So I'll probably come back and pour this either tomorrow or sometime this evening. I found some chopsticks, so I'm just gonna use those to stir instead of a plastic knife because they will fit all the way into one of these containers. Okay, now that I've gotten these all painted with nail polish, I can go ahead and bead around them. The first thing though is that I'm going to back this with some felt. So normally I like to use Lacey's Stiff Stuff and uh, that's just like a stiffened felt that you can sew through. 
but normally I like to use that if these are gonna be just like floating on their own but because these are gonna be sewn to fabric and the lace that they're getting sewn to is already pretty stiff I don't need such a stiff backing to it in fact I want something that will be a little bit easier to sew through than stiff stuff so first thing to do is cut this into little squares so that this can live on top of it forever and then we're gonna glue them with lots of E6000. If you're using E6000 be sure to be careful of your safety and all of that actually with all of this process with all of the resin and nail polish and everything you should be making sure you're working in a very well ventilated space with a respirator so just make sure you are keeping your lungs healthy and safe. Now that these are all glued, basically they just have to dry before I can beat them, so I will see you back here in a couple of hours. Now that my gems are dry, I can finally start beating them, and I've done a little sample here. This is gonna go on the dress, so it's kind of a sample, but also the real thing. And I'm really happy with how this turned out. I think it's really cute, and it doesn't take too long. It just adds a little bit of, I don't know, interest to something that would be fairly simple otherwise. So. I followed a tutorial from somebody else, though I simplified it a lot because I didn't need this to be quite as complicated since there's going to be uh, 24 of these. I really don't need to do something super elaborate. It just needs to not be like a straight gem like this. I think the tutorial that I followed has like three rows of this inner border and then it's also got this outer border. I decided to simplify that down to the one inner border and one outer border and that's it. It's just a back stitch for this inner border here and then a peyote stitch for this outer border. First I'm just gonna trim this down a little bit because it really doesn't need to be this large and it's gonna get trimmed down again but I want to have a little bit of something to grab onto while I'm working with it. Pretty much every bead tutorial also uses a specific jewelry thread, but because this is going to be going onto a dress and I don't want to go out and buy a specific thread for this, I'm just using my normal Guterman thread and it's working just fine. If this was going to be a jewelry piece, then I might want something that's a little bit more substantial and stable, but because this is going to literally get glued down to a piece of lace, it, it's not going to have much stress on it. So I'm going to start from the back and come up right next to the resin gem. I'm going to leave a tail and then I'm going to grab two beads. Kind of guesstimate the distance to be around the size of the two beads. It's better to go too loose than too tight. And then come back up through where the first needle hole was. Come back through those same two beads and then grab two more beads. Gauge that distance again and go back through to the back and this time instead of grabbing two beads or like all four beads I'm gonna go through near the third bead um, the gap between the first and the second original beads and then I'm just gonna grab three beads so the two newest beads and one from the previous round make sure that stays there and then repeat Once you've got beads all the way around, then you just want to travel through all of your beads with the thread a couple times. Now that we've got the first row done, we can start on the second row. But first I'm going to trim this away uh, so that when I do the second row, it just covers up any excess. When you're doing this, be really careful not to cut your threads, otherwise you'll just have to redo the whole thing.
for the outer section, you're going to take your first stitch from the front this time. So pick up a bead and then pick a spot on the front. Go all the way through and leave yourself a little tail. You want it to be fairly long because you're going to use it to go back through beads at the end, so just leave a pretty long tail. And then from the back, you want to go back up through that bead. And that'll make it so the bead has the hole sticking outwards rather than in parallel with these beads. Next, you're going to grab a bicone and another bead. Go about three beads over and stab down through the front. Pull that tight and then you're doing the same thing where you go up the same direction that you came from with the seed bead. Then do the same. So I'm on my last bicone. I need to add one to fill in this gap right here. So I'm going to put a needle onto the other side of the thread that I started on. So this is the tail that we left at the beginning. So I'm going to grab one of the bicones, go through the top of this bead that's next to it, and then go down through the backing and kind of come out in the middle here. And I'm going to put my needle back on the original end. So I've got that threaded and now I'm going to go back through the bicone that I just added from the other side. And then down through the opposite side seed bead. And again go back through the backing and try to end up in about the same place that the other ends came through. And then sometimes these will want to kind of like pop off like that, but just shove them back on there. It's fine. <laughs> and then tie this off. And that can just be snipped right off there. And that's pretty much it. So that was the whole process of casting the mold and casting the resin and then painting them and beading them and attaching to them to the dress. I am hoping this glue will hold. I chose to do glue because I thought that it would be a little cleaner than trying to stitch it on. Um, I was worried that if I stitched these on then the stitching would be visible around the beads but I'm not sure that the glue is holding very well. So I'll give an update in the skirt video whether or not this glue actually held once it was cured. So that's it. This is what the skirt's gonna look like. This is what the like the finished thing looks like. I have not finished all the beading and I definitely haven't finished casting and beading all the gems so I only have like 20 some more to go and then I'm done right that's it's still a lot to do well anyways that's it for my resin video I hope you enjoyed it I'm not an expert on resin casting I had one class in school and then I've watched a lot of tutorials especially with the beading part of it I didn't have that as a class in school the beading part I just have watched a lot of tutorials nail polish trick was something that I learned from a friend her name is 
Pom Pom Surin, I think, on Instagram. I'll show her handle on the screen right now. Um, she used to be Atelier Licorice, but I think she changed her name. But I learned this from her. She makes really beautiful costumes as well, so you should check her out. And that's it. That's all I've got for today. I hope this was informative and you learned something, or if not, you at least got to look at some pretty things. And I hope to see you guys in the next video. Bye!